already drank that whole shake. Okay, I've got a special project for a pair of earrings with lab created emerald. So I've got this piece remaining of my Colombian colored man-made emerald. Uh, it's not totally uh, internally flawless, but it's much cleaner than natural emerald would be. And people seem to like having an inclusion or two in, in the man-made emerald, so that, that's not a bad thing with emerald. So what I've done to make earrings is I'm gonna cut this piece into two pieces here and here and that'll give me a leftover. This, this part here on the end will be leftover. Getting kind of small. Not sure what I can use that for, but there's a couple of things I can cut it into. Uh, maybe in a future video, I'll give some of my lab created emerald rough away. Stay tuned, I've been thinking about that. So what I'll do is I'll take this to my trim saw and trim it up. And the arrows show what side of the line I want my blade to hit on. And that'll give me more than enough space to cut the uh, size that are needed for these earrings. They have to match, they have to be the same size, they have, both have to be the same size, and it has to be, uh, it has to fit the earrings which Bopi is designing perfectly. So once again, it's gonna be a challenge, but we'll use, uh, we'll use this piece of rough. Okay, I've got, uh, Two pieces that I can use for the earrings and a leftover, still a nice sized leftover piece that I'll use for some future project for our man-made emerald. I know I'm going to get a relatively low return on my rough because these pieces of rough are blocky and what I need to cut are pear shapes. So there's gonna be some loss of rough. However, in this one case, I'm not worried about the rate of return from the rough. And that's because this is a special order and I need these two gemstones to be twins of each other. The same exact length and width, and so they fit into a pair of earrings that match. And the earrings are surrounded by diamonds. So, and also this is a rush order, uh, as a client needs these earrings for a special event that's coming up. So it's better to have too much rough to start with on this project. The design I will use for these earrings is called Ellen's Challenge by Arya Akhavan. And I have cut this design before. I did use Gem Cut Studio or GCF software to modify the design from the original um, because Bopi needs a specific length to width ratio and she needs it to be 1.5 to 1. The design that I've got uh, is, will give a length to width ratio of 1.466, not quite 1.5, but I can use the G4 girdle line of instructions and cut them late in as I cut the the girdle and that will uh, allow me to cut them to get the length just right because it'll be the tip of the pair and as I cut those girdles the girdle with the g4 line of instruction I'll check the length and I'll stop right when I get the length just where Bopi needs it as I said I have cut this design before it is probably the most difficult pair design that I've cut so far and pair designs in general are more difficult than say a round design a square design or rectangular design so this one's going to be a challenge but in gem cutting the more you cut a design the better you become at cutting the design so like it or not I'm getting good at cutting pair designs and uh, I have cut a number of Arya's designs before and all of them have turned out great so far um, Arya did put this design into the public domain in the gemology project website for any cutter to try and here's the website where you can uh, get Arya's Allen challenge design okay so to put my dop on my stone what I do is I'm using a dop that's bigger than eight millimeters because I need eight millimeters wide so when I finally cut it down it's going to be slightly the stone will be slightly smaller than the dop so that and you also want the dop to go near the rear port, port part of the gemstone, in this case of this design, because the, the half round part will be right here. When you look at the uh, pear shape, there's kind of a, 
pear pointy part that goes towards the front and then a half round. So that should match this half round right around the top. So now that I've got it lined up, I'm going to switch it to a smaller dop, probably a five millimeter dop, but I've already got my dop in place. So the modeling clay will kind of hold the stone in place as I switch dops to the one I'm going to use. So now this stop is lined up where I want it. And now I'm gonna use my uh, super glue to glue the stone to the dot. Now again, our center point on, our, on this design, the center point of the final gemstone is not at the center of the stone as it would be with many other type designs. It's, it's kind of towards the uh, rear of the stone, the back third. And so what you wanna do this part, this, and this, these three uh, sides, when you're done cutting it, will form kind of a half a circle. And that's your center point between, between this side and this side, and, and the same amount of space between the bottom and this side. So, so that's the center point. And so the way you have to put it in your dop, you put your dop into your uh, index, into the spindle of your machine, is you want to be at the, one way would be at 96 tooth, and then put the stone in so that the 96 tooth is the back part. The alternative would be at the 24 or 72 teeth of your index, 24 and the 72 being on the sides. All, all three of those will work to help you kind of set your stone initially into your spindle. So again, we've talked about the key dot feature of the Ultratech, which is a kind of a, the dots are cut, some of the dots are cut at a 45 degree angle, so they fit into the into the spindle uh, one way if you push it all the way in. But that's not where we want to be with this design. Again, we want that flat part, the back part, to be at the 96. So, so you can easily override the key dot feature. The key dot feature wants to put this stone in this way. You just twist it. It comes up a little bit and overrides the uh, the key dot feature. So you can, so don't think that the Ultratech makes you put the stone in one way. It doesn't. You can override the key dot feature very easily. The key dot feature helps you when you're cutting stones such as round stones and you transfer them. It aligns the top and the bottom, the crown of the pavilion up almost perfectly. So anyway, our stone's now aligned for this design uh, and we're ready to just uh, tighten up the set screw and we'll start cutting. The first thing I'll do is I'll preform the girdle because I want to set the size because this is a, a pair of match, pair of earrings they've got to match. So. I'm going to set the size first, and I'll probably start with my 300 level toppers. I may go to a 200, probably 200 level topper, because I want to move some rough and uh, start cutting from there. So to set the width of our uh, stone, I'm just working on the uh, those lines of instruction that I've highlighted. That'll allow me to set the width, and then I'll work later to set the uh, length. So finished with the uh, 320 grit topper, and now I'll go to the 600 topper, and then the uh, my 12M, and I'll probably continue to work until I've uh, 
polished those facets and then worked the rest of the facets. Okay, on the girdle, I've got the uh, back part of the girdle polished. Well, I've got my width of my stone set and polished. And now I'll work on the length because I have to get it an exact length and width. So now I'll work on the length of our uh, emerald. Okay, I've got the front part of our uh, pair preformed now with my uh, 12M. And I'll go over it next with my 8,000 diamond on a zinc lap. And this small facet up here in the front on the girdle, this is the G4 uh, line of instruction. That's the facet that I'll polish in and use to set my length. Because as, I, as you continue to cut this facet, it kind of reduces your length a little bit. So that's going to be what I'm used to make the final adjustment to make the length just where I want it. Uh, it should, according to the instructions, uh, that facet line should line up with this facet line up, up here, but it doesn't have to. And to make the length just the way I want it, that, that's what I'm going to focus on is getting the length instead of meeting that line. It won't make any difference visually as far as I'm concerned. So I'll continue to uh, pre-polish our emerald. Okay, I've polished uh, the bottom part of our emerald except that I need to put two more rows of step cuts around the, uh, the pavilion. So that should go pretty quickly, but uh, let me go ahead and work on those next two rows. Okay, I finished polishing the pavilion, the bottom half of our lab-created emerald. Um, we polished right up with our cerium oxide and uh, the creamway lap. So now I will uh, transfer the stone on the top and cut the upper half of our pear-shaped emerald. Okay, for our second uh, earring, we want the uh, back part, the flat back part, to be at 96 index. So we put our index to cut at the 96, and we put it in our spindle so that it's horizontal here at the 96 and then we lock it in place and we're ready to start cutting our second earring okay i'm going to cut the uh, p1 preform it with my uh, 220 grit uh, topper the p1 line of instruction will give me kind of a half circle on the back part of this uh, pear shape and i'll cut that to a center point and that'll allow me to then uh, cut the g1 line of instruction the girdle and uh, that'll set the stone size. So I need it to be an exact size. So I'll cut the P1 first and then the G1 and then the other ones. So actually my topper is a uh, 210 topper, 210 grit diamond topper. So I've set my uh, angle at uh, 40.9 to cut the P1 set of instructions. And I start a slow drip to wash away the schwarf and I begin cutting down to a center point. And then I check the cut to make sure that uh, it's cutting. I can see the kind of the center of my dot through the stone. I see I need to cut out I'm about there. So I'll cut around this stone and uh, continue preforming it. Okay, after cutting the P1 and the G1 uh, line of instructions, um, I now see I have the half moon, half circle back part of the pavilion preformed. It's bigger than I need, so I'll work to bring the sides in, which will bring the back in um, to the exact side I need. I'll probably polish the girdle, work to polish the girdle and get it the right size, 
and I will use the P2 and P3 line of instructions which will bring get rid of some of this rough so I'm not having to cut all this rough when I do the P1 cut of instruction and the G2 G3 on the girdle to bring those the girdle rough out of the way because I just need to work with this small part right here and the only thing I won't do uh, is work on the G4 girdle which is going to close up the tip I'll, I'll cut that later after I set the width and do some I get the stone pretty pretty far along I'll, I'll use that G4 and to bring the tip together that will allow me to set the width exactly the way I need it. So I'll continue to work on uh, this emerald. Okay, I preformed this stone. So now um, I'm only going to work with the the half circle in the back. I just uh, rough preformed these facets here to get this uh, rough out of the way. Now I can use a much finer grit lap and. Uh, the facets are small so I won't have to worry about working it too hard otherwise if I'd left these unpreformed at all when I'm cutting these facets they'd be cutting all the way out to here so um, that's why I preformed a little bit there so now I'm going to work on getting the girdle where I need it and that's why I needed to cut to the center point with this first row of facets because that shows me where the girdle goes right there's a facet for the girdle right there because it's the same indexes up here in the pavilion that I use for the girdle so now I know um, where to cut my girdle where to stop where to where to line it up at because I line it up with these uh, facets up here in the pavilion so I'm just going to work on these eight facets um, to set the length the width of my stone. Okay, I went ahead and uh, polished the girdle on this back part, is half round. And I went ahead and polished these two uh, as well, but I still have another facet on the girdle which will come back here. It'll be right here on this side and the other side. That's the final girdle facet, but I'm gonna save that till later because that's gonna help me set the length of, of this gemstone. If I followed the instructions, it has a length to width ratio, but that'll make it a little bit short from what Bopi wants. So uh, I'm going to use this last facet and it as the uh, mechanism to set the, set the length. So the line on this facet won't line up, probably won't line up perfectly with the, uh, the facet up here but that's okay because it's more important that I hit the length. Now the other thing I did is on the girdle, because this is such a large amount of rough, I did not polish it at 90 degree angle. I went down to 89.9 um, and if you could see it, there's just the top part uh, of this facet is polished because I used 89, uh, something less than 90 degrees. With 90 degrees, I'd be polishing this whole thing, which is a lot of work to polish. And then I'm going to cut off everything except point, uh, point 0.3, point 0.5, something like that, millimeters. So a very small amount will become the girdle. There's no need to polish all of this. So now I'll continue to polish the uh, rest of the pavilion of our emerald. Okay, the pavilion polished right up with the uh, creamway lap. So now I'll transfer our second earring and uh, cut the upper half of this stone. Okay, so as we transfer our emerald, it's not difficult to align the stone properly, but there is a possibility of messing it up. You have to make sure the 96 aligns with the bottom, this facet, and the 72 with this, or, or the 24 with this one. So. Let me show you how I set it in my spindle. Okay, so don't let the diagram uh, throw you off. It's simply showing that at the 96 tooth, when you're cutting the 96 index, that you will be cutting this flat facet at the bottom of the stone. That That's all it's saying. So uh, if you kind of look at the diagram 
and don't think about what you're doing, you could put the stone in backwards. So at the 72 index tooth, for example, for the Altertech, this is the proper alignment at the 72 tooth. It's going to be, the stone's going to be facing that way. But on the diagram, it looks like the 72 would have the stone facing the other way. So then once you've got stone aligned, then I uh, simply use my flat uh, calibrated block to align this facet and make sure it's it's perfectly flat and that we're in the crown and the pavilion are in alignment. Let me show you quickly how I do that. Okay, so I put my calibrated block on my flattest lap, which for me is my uh, ceramic lap. And then I put the uh, 72 index, put the stone in, and I align that facet so that when at a 90 degree angle, when I raise or lower the mast, that facet is, uh, you see light under the facet all evenly across that facet. The facet is flush with that uh, calibrated block. That's when you're your girdle's in alignment and you tighten the set screw and we can begin cutting the upper half of our stone. Okay, I've uh, polished about half the facets on this, uh, the top part of our emerald. And now I'm gonna take it out of the machine, which I've already done, and I'm gonna cut the table and then go back and cut the remaining facets. And that, I think that'll help me line those facets up a little better and that's the way Aria wrote the instruction, so I think we'll try it. Let me show you on the cutting assistant from uh, ChemCut Studio. Aria's instructions are to cut the table now uh, and align it with the meat points, the few meat points that I've cut. Then, as I cut the rest of the facets on the crown and polish them, I'll have them just polish them in to meet the table. A little bit different than I traditionally cut tables, but Hey, give it a try. Okay, the table's polished up, so now I'll go back and uh, uh, put the stone back in the machine and line it up and finish those final few facets and make sure they touch the table. Okay, I finished polishing the first of our earrings, so now I'll work on the second one. For the uh, second earring, I've finished uh, pre-polishing pretty much the crown with my uh, 8,000 grit diamond on the zinc lap. The, uh, you know, the second time you do a stone, when you do it back to back with the same pattern, it goes a lot quicker. And uh, so this is, this one's coming along a lot quicker. There's no issues. And uh, now I'll uh, start polishing it. Okay, I finished polishing our two Emerald, our pair of earrings, and they're exactly the width and length that I needed, so now I'll soak them in the acetone and see how much they weigh and uh, send them off to Bopi so she can finish the set of earrings for the client. Today I cut a matching pair of gemstones for a pair of earrings that is a special order for Bopi. I did use more rough than I normally would have liked, but this was a rush special order and I had to get the pair exactly right the first time. So I had to be willing to sacrifice some carat weight in the rough to ensure that the length and width were just right in the end. Pair designs are challenging, and in my opinion, a pair design should not be the first or even the second gemstone design that a new cutter cuts. However, the more you cut a pair design, the better you get at cutting pair designs. So don't avoid cutting pairs, don't avoid cutting marquees designs or oval designs. Cutting these harder designs help you helps you very much improve as a cutter. As far as the design, what can I say? All the designs created by Arya that I have cut so far have cut beautiful gemstones. Thanks again, Arya. So please let me know in the comments what you think of these gemstones and of the design. And as always, happy fastening, everyone. Hello, everybody. It's been a while, but I'm back. Today, I would like to show you the final product of the earrings that we have made for customer. A few months ago, we have made a ring for customer with the diamond and emerald. She loved it so much, she wanted a, a matching earrings to go with it. So, told Michael to go to work. When the stones were completed, 
The first design that popped in my head was a classic Halo style. So tell us what you think in the comment. Happy fasting!